Welcome everyone. Really glad you can join us for this session. And today we're going to be talking about machine learning on Amazon EKS. My name is Mike Stefaniak. I'm a product manager on the EKS team and I've been focusing on our machine learning efforts in the Kubernetes space. Before we get into the demos, just real quickly, why, you know, why containers, why machine learning, why Kubernetes? And I think before we get to Kubernetes, we need to talk about containers because some of the same challenges that container solved for microservice-based applications, which is packaging your dependencies in code together and solving the, you know, it ran fine on my machine problem. It, it solves some of the change, same challenges for machine learning, where you might be packaging your training code, your dependencies, your configurations, maybe even some of your data together and run it in multiple places. And so on Kubernetes, there's, there's really three things why machine learning has become so popular. Composability, portability, and scalability. Composability is, is really what we just talked about, where you can, you can package up all of your uh, dependencies into a container. And that really allows you to separate the uh, separation of duties between the data scientists, where they can run whatever library they want, and then the machine learning operations team who can handle the Kubernetes cluster underneath. Portability, meaning you can run Kubernetes in an open source framework like Kubeflow on your laptop, you can run it on premises and you run it on the cloud. And it makes it really easy to move your training jobs and in, in inferencing endpoints from on premise to the cloud. For example, when you need a lot more machines, you, you, you might not have them on premises, but if you go to AWS, you, know, you, you can scale to many GPUs in a cluster. And then scalability, that's, that's really where Kubernetes and EKS excels. You can run hundreds, even thousands of worker nodes in a cluster, and you can iterate really quickly. So you might need to run a training model, tweak something, run it again, and the more worker nodes in your cluster, the faster you can iterate and train your model. And in an example machine learning workflow, it really ends up being multiple steps from ingestion and analysis and data transformation, where you might use something like Spark, model training where you might use TensorFlow or PyTorch, and then the actual deployment where you, know, you, you run it on your Kubernetes cluster and serve predictions. And each one of these things, and each one of these stats ends up being its own microservice. And of course, Kubernetes is great at managing container-based microservices. We're excited to talk about a new project that we've collaborated with the PyTorch team at Facebook on called the Torch Elastic Controller for Kubernetes. One of the challenges with, with machine learning training is compared to say a normal microservice application you run in Kubernetes, is that with, with the normal application, when a pod goes away, typically another replica comes up and your application continues serving traffic. With machine learning training, if you lose a worker node, for example, typically you have to restart the entire job. And that can become very painful if you have a training job that's running for three, four hours, sometimes even longer. And so PyTorch developed a new library called PyTorch Elastic, which is designed for deep learning, fault tolerant and elastic training, which one of the, one of the big benefits is that you can run training jobs on EC2 spot instances because your training job can now tolerate failures. And so what we built is a Kubernetes native controller that implements the PyTorch Elastic interface and spins up all the pods and services needed to run a PyTorch Elastic training job in a Kubernetes cluster. And so we're gonna run through a quick demo here to simulate how you can start a training job and then if it was running on spot instances in one one way, how your training job would just continue to run. So I have another cluster I've created ahead of time. And in this case, uh, I used EKS managed node groups to create two different node groups. One is just a, uh, a node group with one instance with a small, I think it's a T3 instance in it. And then another one with node group of two Amazon EC2 P3 instances, which are designed for training. And I'll, I'll get to why we need both of these in a minute. So I'm gonna go back to my, to my IDE here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is install the controller and the custom resource into my cluster. So uh, how the Torch Elastic for, control, for controller for Kubernetes works is the controller runs in your cluster 
and it watches a custom resource definition that's also installed. And in that custom resource definition, you define the minimum and maximum number of workers that you can have as part of your training job, and the controller manages the pods uh, that you define in there. So I've downloaded the Torch Elastic uh, GitHub repository locally here. And to install the controller, you just run, I'll run this command and you'll see it'll create a new namespace, uh, uh, role, role bindings, the custom resource definition, and then the controller itself. So we should see here the controller got installed in this namespace. Let's filter this down. And we can see that the Torch Elastic controller started. Um, how PyTorch Elastic works is it has a component called Rendezvous, which is responsible for maintaining the membership of the workers that are part of your training job. And the recommended backend for Rendezvous is etcd, which is the same backend that Kubernetes uses. And so what we're gonna do is install just a simple, a single etcd instance into our cluster. So we have this file here and you'll notice that I have this selector on here because I'm gonna make sure that the etcd instance runs on the T3, which we would run as an on-demand instance versus having it run on the P3 instances, which could be spot and may go away. So let's apply the Apply the etcd instance to the cluster, and you can see that's up and running. Let's check the logs, looks good. Looks like we started. And now let's launch our training job into our cluster. So this is the custom resource, it's called Elastic Job. And what we're doing here is defining our rendezvous endpoint, which in this case is just a local etcd service we just created. I'm defining the minimum and maximum number of replicas that should be able to run in this training job. So in this case, minimum of one, maximum of three, and we're gonna start with two replicas. And each replica is requesting a GPU, and I currently have two GPU instances in my cluster, so this should start. And in this case, for the training container, we're just using the built-in Torch Elastic example, which I believe uses an ImageNet uh, model to train. So let's go ahead and apply this to our cluster. Whoops. And we should see two workers start here, two pods. And so in this case, the controller was watching the custom resources called Elastic Job. It saw one was added to the cluster and it's go went ahead and created the pods needed for training for us. And if we look into the logs here, we can see that the training job is starting. You can see that the, the logs here are mentioning the rendezvous state. So rendezvous is keeping track of the number of workers in my training job. And so now our training job is, is chugging happily along. And let's simulate if we were running these on spot instances and one of them got taken away, what would happen? So I go back to my cluster here and I'm going to go into my P3 node group. And I'm gonna change the capacity down to one. And what that's gonna do is take away an instance out of the cluster, which is similar to what might happen if you're running on a fleet of spot instances and one of them gets taken away. So let's go back and look here. <clears throat> we can see our training job is started, it's running through a number of um, intervals here as part of the model training. So you can see it's, you know, 260 out of 1500. So it still has a little bit of ways to go here. Let's refresh our node group. And we can see that in our node group, we now are down to a single 
node. And we'll look back in our cluster And you can see that one of the nodes is already, uh, it's scheduling disabled and it eventually it'll be removed from the cluster. Now in a normal training job, this would mean the job would fail. And if you had a job running for three hours, you'd have to restart the entire thing. But let's go back and check. And you can see that one of the workers went away. It's now pending because there's no uh, node in the cluster for it to run on. But let's take a look at our other one and it looks like here is where the instance went away but it looks like rendezvous spun up uh, or rather rendezvous realized that one of the the rendezvous component realized one of the nodes left the cluster and it looks like another rendezvous happened and sure enough uh, our node our our job continues to train and this is this is a pretty powerful uh, component, right? If, if you had a job that was running for, for hours and even days, uh, your job can tolerate failure. So you can run on spot instances, save money. Uh, you know, if, if you're a machine learning uh, team, your data scientists are happy because your uh, training jobs are going to finish faster and they won't ever have to be restarted. And your finance department is going to be happy because the GPUs in your cluster are always being put to good use. So that's a quick, a quick demo of the Torch Elastic Controller for Kubernetes. Uh, some, some ideas for future improvements we have are automatic worker resizing uh, and adding a concept of job priority and in, in, uh, of job priority into the into the Elastic Job custom resource. Thank you all very much for listening. 